Hello, everyone. Delighted that you can join us for another episode of the Changing Minds podcast. Today, I'm super, super excited because I'm going to be joined by someone who I've got the pleasure of studying from in person. Um, J Dr. J.J. Peterson serves as Chief of Teaching and Facilitation at StoryBrand, as well as a co-host for a chart topic, charts topic podcast, Building a Story Brand with Donald Miller. JJ is a PhD in communication, and prior to joining StoryBrand, he spent the previous 20 years teaching and practicing communication in the entertainment industry and higher education. But for me, the real reason I'm excited is because the principles and ideas of Story Brand are so simple, but yet so profoundly powerful. And not only is the book um, a great source for anyone interested in being an entrepreneur or marketing, but also JJ has written a book with Don Miller called uh, Marketing Made Simple, which is going to be out very, very soon. So I'm really excited to talk to JJ Peterson about his incredible work around marketing and around building your business better. So JJ, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Very excited. Now, I want to start off by just getting some insider idea from you as to, well, how did you get to where you got to today? So you obviously started off um, in this area, in this industry. How did you end up doing the work that you do in StoryBrand? Um, well, <laughs> my, the staff here makes fun of me all the time because Don will say, somebody will just ask a question like, have you ever been a coach? And they'll go, well, of course, JJ has been a coach. Or they'll say, have you ever, has anybody here ever done, like traveled to this country? And they'll go, well, JJ probably has. My life has been a wild ride, which it's been very fun, kind of a lot of things, but um, all of it for most part, especially in my adult life has been around some form of communication and storytelling. Whether that I was a pastor for a little while, um, I did public relations for a couple international nonprofit, worked in both Africa and South America, Central America. Um, so did fundraising. I did improv comedy. I actually toured and did improv comedy for about four years. And that led me into doing stuff in Hollywood. So uh, writing and acting, um, being in uh, different TV and TV and film kind of things. And then I wanted to teach that stuff. So then I went back and got my master's and started teaching, uh, teaching the arts and teaching communication and speech and debate and all those things, marketing. And where really kind of all of that culminated in I was dean of students at a college and I was ready to kind of move in my next space. I'd been doing higher education for a while teaching for a while and I actually sold a reality television show to a production company that uh, starred my brothers and I and I w had left the school and was basically in the process of getting the show on television and story brand was just getting started at that time and Donald Miller and I were friends and he was like hey why don't you come out to one of these workshops and brand your television show and he's like, I'd love to see what you think. And so there was a little tiny bit of me that was like, you know what, I've been doing this for 20 years, Don. Yes, it's cute. I will come out and I will check out this little, little thing that you're starting here, you know, and I'll see. And it, I was blown away. I was like, I was hooked from day one because like you said, I, I think you mentioned in the intro is that the principles of story brand if anybody who's been communicating and doing marketing and messaging for a long time, a lot of the principles that we teach are not mind blowing in and of themselves, but Don has a way of taking these complex theories and ideas and boiling it down to a very practical and easy to apply framework. And so it, what we do is we teach people how story works because you know, story is such a big buzzword in marketing everybody's like we got to tell our story we got to tell a better story most people are telling the wrong story and they know it intuitively they are because it, what they're saying is not working and it's not it's not communicating message confusing people not engaging them in the way they want and what don has done and what we do at story brand is say there's actually rules to how you tell a story and when you understand those rules and you understand why those rules are important and use those rules to clarify your message, then you're going to engage with customers and grow your business. And for me, that was just absolutely fascinating um, because I'd been doing and teaching story forever. And he had 
it, it wasn't anything quite what I would say like new principles to me, but it was just put in such a simple way that I was like, every person I know needs to hear this. So I basically, I kept going with the television show for a while, but, and was flying back and forth to Nashville to help out with story brand. And ultimately I was like, no, I'm moving to Nashville. I'm all in on this. Um, I'm so excited to share it with everybody. So. Fantastic. Well, I have to say like just in terms of what you were saying there, as you said, the principles themselves are real simple, but for me, it, it's a real art form. Like one of the things I loved about it is, is nothing that you, nothing that you hear, if, like you said, if you've been in the area and the space of storytelling and learning all this for years, nothing is radically new, but the stuff that is focused on is so important specifically for marketing. And, and if you, if you really look at what makes it special, it's an art form that you have to keep working on and keep getting better at. It's like copywriting. It really yes. is, you know, yes. a skill set that you have to hone and develop and stuff. And that's to me why there's so much depth in it. It's, it's so well laid out, but yet there's a lot of depth in each of the points of, of, in terms of skill set that you really have to get through, which also taps in, I think, to your creativity as well. Because as a storyteller mm -hmm. like yourself, and certainly for me, there's a fun... Uh, element too it can drive you mental if you're working on your yeah. own stuff you know like yeah. i was talking one of the principles i loved you guys talking about was like the curse of knowledge and, and for anyone out there it's the more you know about your product or service sometimes the harder it is for you to actually articulate it clearly and that's yeah. what the framework really helps you to do so yeah. um, you know it's and it's, I've, been, you know, I've been doing it now for about you know going on five years maybe i guess and it never gets old to me I mean, I just get excited every time I get to work with an individual company or a large group of people because it is creative. Every company tells a story differently. And, but this gives you guide rails, right? Like I think a lot of times we get ready to put up a website or put up emails or even just stand in front of an audience and we go, we're starting from a blank piece of paper and there's 500 different directions to go. And what the framework does is say, no, actually here, these are your guide rails and think about these questions. And when you can answer these questions, this will give you your story. Brilliant. And could you give us just uh, the listeners a brief overview? I know it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's a full uh, couple of days workshop, but could you give the readers an overview of the story brand process? Yeah. So the first is understanding why story is important, that it really, uh, our brain is designed to um, basically understand very quickly when we're processing information, what will help us survive and thrive. And we're trying not to burn calories in the process. There's a whole bunch of science behind it that basically, like, you know, when you walk into a a grocery store, you may know, not be, pay attention to every single thing that's in front of you, but you always know where the exits are, right? Like our brain is just naturally filtering out information that doesn't immediately contribute to our survival and thriving. So we're looking for that and we're trying to do it in a way that is that where we don't have to think too heavy about it because our brain has a limited decision-making ability essentially over a day, right? We have a limited number of calories that can go towards decision-making. And so um, we need, when something is too confusing, we just like tune it off. We stop listening. And for those of us who are trying to tell stories, that's actually a hard thing because every single day people are receiving between three to 5,000 commercial messages a day. So our brain is just, we don't recognize that, but our brain is filtering out any messages that do not contribute to our survival and thriving or are too confusing to understand. So story breaks through that. And basically when you can tell a good story, it helps make sense of a message. And <clears throat> it helps basically focus information in a way that can contribute to people's survival, thriving, and do it in a way that they don't have to burn any calories to understand. So... The, there are rules to story that have been developed over uh, centuries, really, going all the way back to Plato and Aristotle. And if you break those rules, that's when all of a sudden people go, I don't understand how this contributes to my survival and thriving, and I'm having to think too hard about it, so I'm out. I'm not paying attention. And, but when we follow the rules, it actually puts it in a way that people can understand. And so this is how story works. There is, in every good story, there is a character. And we understand very quickly within about the, you know, in a movie within about nine minutes, what that character wants. So the first element of story, there's seven, seven elements of story. The first is there's a character who wants something. Then that character in the story encounters a problem. There's a problem that gets in the way. And basically 
the entire movie is about that character overcoming that problem to get what they want. But we know as an audience that the character, if they could overcome the problem on their own, they would not be in the situation to begin with. So they have to have help. And they encounter a guide, somebody who comes alongside them, who helps them overcome the problem. And in branding and marketing, this is actually the role your company needs to be playing in the story. You are not the hero of the story. You are the guide. You are helping your customer overcome problems. So the character has a problem, meets a guide, who gives them a plan, a very clear step forward to win the day. There is a call to action. There's a moment that the character has to act. And then we know what the end of the story should look like if things go successfully. So we have a vision of what success looks like, but we also know what happens if they don't overcome their problems and they fail. So those are the seven elements that are in every story. A character with a problem, who meets a guide, who gives them a plan, calls them to action, and we know what success and failure looks like. That's every movie you've ever seen basically falls in that category. And when, what we do is we teach companies how to understand that process, why that process is important. And then we help them create messaging points for those, what we would call buckets, those elements of story. So understand what is it that your character, your hero, your customer actually wants. That needs to be clear and contribute to their survival and thriving. So they don't have to burn any calories and they understand quickly that this is, what they want is actually gonna move them forward in their life. Then we have to articulate the problem that they are encountering that is getting in the way and that we are the people who can solve that problem for them. Then we position ourselves as a guide who comes along and helps them and there are specific things that we teach you to do. Then you give them a plan, a very clear way forward, a clear call to action, and then cast a vision of what success looks like at the end of their story or what failure looks like if they don't engage. So that's really the, a very high level overview of how story works, why story is important, and then how we apply that to branding and marketing. Love it, love it. And that was really, really clearly explained. I mean, I think uh, once you get into the story brand framework, for those of you uh, who are listening, um, there's an awful lot of nuances inside of each of those. So it's not just it's not just about the problem. There's like three different levels that Don and JJ and Kula go through to explain to you exactly what you need to know. There's different qualities that you need to possess as a guide. Um, so although, you know, it, as, as JJ laid it out, it's really straightforward and simple in terms of those steps, inside of each, there's a lot more nuance, a lot more depth about how you do that, especially like even, even in the success and failure at the end, there is um, the importance of the stakes there. It's really raising the, the, the stakes such that yeah. people recognize that, it, that that call to action that you're clearly and directly communicating needs to be taken in that way. One of the things I love um, in terms of nuances when we're talking about that, that uh, you guys keep repeating, which is something I might have heard a couple of times but I never really registered properly until it was said a number of times, and that is in marketing copy or when you're communicating about your product and is not your friend, and commas are not your friend. I absolutely yeah. love it. Because I'm the worst yeah. for that. I'm like, I'll give you a million commas and a million ands. Yeah. And why that is important from a copywriting perspective, and in particular when you are communicating a message in marketing, is that what I said earlier about how we're looking very quickly to not have to burn calories and think too deeply. So a lot of times what happens is you're creating marketing and you're trying to throw all the value in that you bring as a speaker, as a leader, as a corporation, as a company, you're going, well, we can do this and this and this and this. And we think we're offering value. And what we're actually doing is confusing people. We talk about it in terms of that, like whenever you're explaining to somebody what you do, you are actually handing them an eight pound bowling ball. They actually have to work to understand. They're burning calories in their brain to understand what you do. So you're handing them a heavy object. And so then you start going, well, we also do this. Now you're handing them another bowling ball. And then you might try to sound really smart by including some inside language about what you do. Now you're handing them a bowling ball that actually is wrapped in Vaseline 
and very slippery and hard to hold on to. Well, and, and we think, well, we're just showing them, this is all the things we do. This is all the value. So we add commas, we add ands to our copy. And in reality, we're causing people to have to think too hard. We're telling different stories, right? We're actually moving them outside and making the story blurry. Because like, for instance, one of the examples we use is when you're understanding, like the very first element of understanding what a character wants. If you were watching Jason Bourne, and Jason Bourne wants to understand where he comes from, but also in the movie, he wants to open a bakery, and also he wants to get the girl, and also he wants to train for a marathon, and also he wants to adopt a cat. Like, that's not a good movie. Now, we think, oh, let's throw more things in the movie because it'll make it more interesting, and in reality, it dilutes the movie, and it makes us confused, and we don't like those movies. We don't like those stories. Well, people are doing that all the time in their marketing. They're adding all of these extra things and trying to throw everything and we think it's more value. We think we're adding more value. We're not, we're adding more confusion. And that, I would say that's one of the biggest mistakes people make in marketing. The other one is kind of what I mentioned in the middle is that I think one of the biggest shifts for me when I came to StoryBrand and the biggest shift, even if your listeners right now, if they get nothing out of this podcast that I say other than this, I would say the biggest thing you need to understand is you are not the hero of your story. If you are trying to tell your story, you're telling the wrong story. You are supposed to tell your customer story. In fact, what you're actually doing is inviting customers into a story. So stop playing the hero in your own story. Play the guide. And there's some very specific ways to do that with empathy and authority, but tell your customer story. Love it. Love it. Um, just before we get into your new book, which I'm really excited to talk about and really excited to read and recommend to people, is I want to ask you about your thesis, because obviously, you know, like my, my background is a psychologist, having yeah. spent uh, years writing, um, researching academia, all that sort of stuff. I know the journey you've gone through. Well, not for <laughs> me, which is another level, but still, I know a lot of the journey you've gone through. And so I'd love to, I'd love to hear more about what, what, were you, what was your thesis? What were your findings? Uh, anything that you would share on that, JJ? Yeah. Um, so my, uh, my dissertation was in the space of, I wanted to look at narrative marketing. So the, the first part was just kind of what research has gone into narrative marketing. Does it work? And you find pretty quickly that narrative marketing, so storytelling, using story in your marketing is effective. Like it just is. Um, both from for to external audiences and internal audiences. So when you're trying to get your whole team on the same page, story is better when you're interpreting facts and data to your internal team, story matters more and externally as well. So the first one was, does story work? And so I did kind of some history and compiled some research that had already been done and then looked at our story brand customers and wanted to see for those who switched to narrative marketing, and incorporated story brand, was it effective? And the answer to that was yes, it is effective. Um, it, you see, you save time in creating marketing materials, you get more customer engagement, you make more money, you, uh, it, you feel better about the business, you're united around a story, all the things it, that got better at. And then the next question I wanted to answer was, were there any variables that contributed to that success differently than others? So if you were a small company or large company, or if you were a, um, a B2B or B2C or nonprofit, or you had a marketing background, or you were over 50, or I looked at every variable I could think of, and basically none of that mattered. <laughs> none of the variables had any influence on success. Um, it, you, it worked. Narrative marketing works for everybody in every arena. The only thing was that just understanding um, narrative marketing and understanding principles doesn't make a difference. You actually have to apply it, which is seems obvious. But basically, the research showed that the more you implemented, the like if you just put narrative marketing in your website, you actually saw an increase in all the things I talked about success. But if you put it on your website and your lead generator, you had even incremental success higher, little higher. Then if you did email, website, lead generator, emails, higher. If you added it to your sales pitches, higher. The more you implemented, the more you saw success. So where that influenced us is we were kind of writing some other books 
but we realize that in order for our customers to really succeed, they actually don't just, I, we don't just want them to understand the principles. We need them to be able to apply this. We want them to make money. We want their messages to get out there. We want them to grow. So they need to implement. So the book we just wrote is called Marketing Made Simple, and it's all about implementation. So it's basically taking the framework, the, the story principles, and from there going, here's exactly, like literally step by step, in many cases, paragraph by paragraph, sentence by sentence, how to create a one-liner, a website, a lead generator, sales emails, and nurture emails. And we just, because we saw, okay, my research showed the only way this makes a difference is if people actually do it. Well, we want to make an easy way for them to do it. So that's what we created with Marketing Made Simple. And so that's kind of that little journey. But one of the interesting things that I really found about in my research on narrative marketing is this. And this is what StoryBrand is really based around of what I mentioned earlier, of their rules to story. So I'm going to get a little academic, academic here <laughs> in this. But the way it kind of works is there is, when we say there are rules to story, it basically means that in order for story to work and for people to engage, there are certain things that can't happen. And one of, there's a, there's a, um, uh, I would say the father of narrative communication theory is his name is Walter Fisher. And he would argue that good stories and stories that make sense have to have what is called fidelity and coherency. They basically have to stick together. They have to flow properly. They have to represent life. They can't go outside of life and things that are like, that don't make sense, right? So they have to build on each other. They have to flow in a certain way. That's fidelity and coherency stick together. And the research shows that when a story has fidelity and coherency, the audience um, actually... In, the audience does what's called narrative transportation, which means they enter into the story. So that would be like um, if you hear somebody say, I got lost in a book, or you're watching a movie and you jump, you've experienced narrative transportation, meaning that you've kind of engaged in that story. And then there's further research that shows the higher narrative transportation, the more people are engaged in the story, the more actually influences their th thoughts and their actions. So a story that's told with, consist with fidelity and coherency that allows people to experience narrative transportation will ultimately change their minds and change their actions. So what uh, research is not out there is basically they can show you when fidelity and coherency is broken, but they don't show you how to achieve it. Like, how do you make sure that you actually have a story that sticks together? And that's what our seven principles of story do, seven elements of story do. It says, here's how to keep a story consistent and together and flow in the right way. Because in our Marketing Made Simple book, what we talk about is a lot of times people just want to sell right away. In reality, people are not, you've not built the relationship, you've not told the, told the story. And if you saw in my seven elements of the framework, call to action and the buy now button is further down the line. And a lot of people try to come in and they try to just sell. And what we want to say is that there is a funnel, actually a relationship funnel that needs to be built through story. And it starts with curiosity. You have to help people become curious about you. And by curiosity, that's really the first couple elements of story. It's you have to identify what is it that they want and connect what you offer to their story and then start talking about the problem the problem they're experiencing over and over and over again. When you talk about the problem, they become curious of, can you understand my problem? So now I need to be curious about how you're going to fix that. The next phase is enlightenment. Now enlightenment is where you start to then educate a little bit about what you have to offer. That's where the guide piece comes in. So you've got them curious by talking about what they want and the problem they're experiencing. Now you enlighten them and say, by the way, I've actually experienced the same problem and I've helped other people overcome it. That's what a guide does. And I have a plan. So both of those really are an enlightenment. Then the final stage of relationship is commitment. 
The commitment is the call to action and then what life looks like after. How does our life look moving forward in this context? So there, you can't just jump in. If you jump to commitment right away, you've told the story wrong. It doesn't have fidelity and coherency. People will not experience narrative transportation. They will not change their mind or buy your product. Does that make sense? Oh, 100%. Um, I mean, there's a few things I love in, in, in what you're talking about there. Um, first of all, in terms of um, the way in which, like you said at the beginning about marketing made simple, I'm familiar with a lot of the areas that you're talking about just from attending story brand and getting a taster and you know some of the online stuff. But you really do have a very clear formula, a step-by-step, -step, very laid out, very simple, walk, your, walk yourself through it on how to structure your website, which is actually very different to anything else I've seen in the marketplace. So if you look at most best practices for build a website design, they might, like Don says, they might look beautiful, but they're not thinking through what actually makes it work. And you guys have created from the story brand framework, you've created a very set, here's what goes at the top of your website above the fold. Here's what to put on the menu. Here's what to put next. Here's what to put next. Here's what to put next. You literally walk it through something I yeah. know myself. I'm redoing my websites in accordance with this because intuitively it makes sense. Then it's the same in terms of the, which I'm presuming is also in Marketing Made Simple about the email campaigns and the nurture yeah. sequences and the sales sequences. So you really yeah. have, to me, in this new book, you're walking through exactly what people need to know. Now, the one thing is, is that to me, there's three things you need then. You need to get examples, which you provide lots in the book, but then you need to practice and you need to get feedback yes. on it and, and working through it, which is one of the benefits to go into your live story brand seminar. But to me, I love that. I love the fact that you're taking this stuff. And so many times we, we read books, which are all about theory, but this yes. new book is going to be, here's how you implement it on a website. Here's how you implement it in a uh, 50 second conversation with someone with your yep. one liner. Here's how to be able to deliver it this way. So you can bring them through, get them once they have the, the hero with the goal uh, or the desire, and then you have the problem and the different types, and then you have the guide with the empathy and stuff, and then you have the, the, the plan and the call to action and the success and value. When you put that all together, to me, it's, it's, it's really great to lay it out because even if I know the theory, it doesn't mean I'm gonna be able to use it on the website effectively. And then the other thing I love you said, and again, forgive me, but I'm just very excited oh, no. about this. <laughs> and the other thing I love is the, in the narrative transportation stuff. So when I'm teaching uh, how to use stories to engage people or whatnot in that area, I talk about the importance of turning points. And I always talk about the importance of cortisol and dopamine. And, and the, the metaphor I use of those is cortisol is when shit goes wrong. Dopamine is when things are resolved again. And you need yeah. both of them to keep people engaged in a story. So when you yeah. emphasize the problem, that's the cortisol, which even though it's got a, a bad press for good reason, it does grab the attention. But you also need the dopamine. You need the failure and you need the success. And to me, the narrative transportation, part of how you get them there through the work that you do is as soon as you start talking about their problem and you do release that cortisol in their brain, now all of a sudden they're hooked into the story. They're not going to get hooked if you just start talking about all the great benefits to your product. So I love the idea and the concept. I think there's, there's studies out there to show the brains of people when they're watching commercials or when they're watching um, uh, sort of the, the previews of movies. Their, their brains all light up on an MRI machine at the same time at the same places. And that's how they know they've effectively engaged in this. So this is, it's wonderful yeah. stuff. Well, it, you know, what you're talking about with the problem and the cortisol goes back to what I very said when I started introducing it is that we're always looking for things. Our brain is searching for to pay attention to things that help us survive and thrive. So when you bring up a problem, problems get in the way of our survival and thriving and danger, right? So we're more focused on the danger and problems and failure than we are success initially because that's a survival mechanism. Right. So when you talk about problems, you can't just go in immediately and talk about the benefits because benefits, while they're wonderful, we're trying to avoid the pain that is right in front of us all the time because that's a survival and thriving mechanism. So you have to talk about it. And we teach about how, you know, that you, you, there are ways to do it without being manipulative. You know, you don't want to be manipulative and just hitting the, you know, over the people over the head with a hammer about it. But you, you do have to include it. There has to be stakes in the story or people won't act. And just kind of one more thing you brought up about narrative transportation in, in my dissertation, one of the things that I discovered is there's actually research on that narrative transportation can be achieved 
even in a single Instagram post. So when we're talking about story here and applying story, a lot of people think it's just about commercials or maybe long form emails or long form websites. It's not. People are doing this well in all areas, social media, you know, Twitter, Instagram, also websites, also your sales pitches and your one-liners and your elevator pitch. When you understand the principles of story and the rules, you begin to understand what, what pieces of the story you need to tell in what order to get people engaged. I love it. I love it. And again, I think that, that, that this new book, Marketing Made Simple, is just perfect if you're a business owner, if you're looking to be able to grow your business, any type of business really, to be honest. I mean, one of the things that I think, and I'm not sure if you agree with this, JJ, but I've seen the mistakes of the lack of clarity made more for B2B businesses in my experience than B2C. Because at least with B2C, oftentimes you're selling a product or a service, it's straightforward enough what you're selling. Whereas B2B, so often I see all of these buzzwords, all this jargon, which again mm -hmm. consumes a massive amount of calories, which again is people trying to be fancy with all these fancy damn words. And people are just looking at it going, I have no idea what your company does. Yeah. And yeah. this is so useful for, for companies like that as well. Yeah. well. We'll work with consultants, like a business coach or something like that, who will have a mountain, like you go to their website and they have a mountain on it. And then it says, conquer your fears or conquer your trials. And what that just, I'm like, are you an adventure company? Are you, and they think they're being clear and they're not at all. And they're causing confusion. And while people can probably figure out what they do by reading the website and going further down and digging in, sure, I get it. But the reality is we don't have time. What I said earlier, we, we're receiving three to 5,000 commercial messages. We're looking for the ones that we can understand the fastest and not burn any calories. So when I go to a website and there's a mountain on there and you're a business coach, you're not being clear. Okay. <laughs> and we just see that over and over and over again. And what's interesting is we get the question a lot. People will call in and go, so do you guys work with B2B businesses? Can you give us an example of a B2B company you've worked with? And I'm like, well, uh, we built an entire company as a B2B business. You know, story brand is B2B. I think, I actually think that this framework works, has an even greater advantage for B2B companies than B2C. Like B2C, it works. It really does because you can, you get focused and you hone in, but the sales cycle for B2C is often a little shorter when you're talking about like shoes or um, flowers or something that people are going to buy instant gratification. So you don't have time to go into the full story. You have to be quick sound bites that come from the story. Whereas B2B, you have a little bit longer to engage and the sales cycle tends to be a little higher, a uh, longer and the price a little higher. And when you do that, then this matters even more. Love it. Love it. Um, now I'm going to, I really want to ask you just just uh, briefly about your screenwriting because I know you're you're a screenwriter. Um, those of the people who are listening in, a lot of them will be familiar that I've done a lot of sort of screenwriting over the last few years, created a few short films that have done quite well. So I'm a really very passionate about this. What are your what are the most important lessons or learnings specifically on screenwriting or TV writing or that kind of area? That, that you might share um, with, with, well, particularly with me. I don't really care for the people <laughs> I'm, I'm curious myself. So. Um, man, I, I don't know if I would call myself a screenwriter. I have, I have written, in, uh, written a few things. Um, I'm actually writing my first feature this year. So I've never written a feature film, and I made a commitment that I'm going to write what, a feature. What, this what genre is it? Um, it's a road trip. And oh, cool. um, okay. so kind of a little bit coming of age road trip. I actually haven't fully narrowed it in yet, which that's part of the process of figuring out uh, a lot of people start with story and the story. And really you want to start with genre. You want to figure out what type of film it is. And you learn that from Blake Snyder and Save the Cat. So you want to know what type of movie you're making, not just like, oh, I've got this great idea for a movie, but what actually is the drive behind it. So what genre is it in? Genre in many ways is often more important than the story itself when you're to help you be focused, not in the grand scheme of things, but to help you as a writer get focused, understanding what genre you're writing and what type of story you're writing to begin with 
is really important. Um, and then the other thing, to be very honest, well, there's, I would say there's two things. The two, one is don't be afraid to leave things out. There's so many things, you know, this goes back to the and and the commas, is that, you know, there's so many details you think are so important and you should not have any details in your screenwriting that do not move the story forward. And I would say that same thing, that's like what we say about marketing. Uh, one of the phrases you say in screenwriting is, don't show a gun in the first scene that you're not, in the first act that you're not gonna use in the third. You know, like if, if it, it is not gonna matter later, don't write about it. So you have to leave a lot of stuff out that you think is really cool and really funny and really amazing. Um, you know, some of the funniest things I've written never got in because they didn't actually move the story forward. They didn't serve the story. They were funny. And again, going back to marketing principles, you can have a beautiful website. If it doesn't move your story forward, it's crap. So don't. Um, and then lastly is just get your butt in the seat and do it. Um, yeah. You know, like it's just, it's a discipline like anything else. You have to just go, I'm going to get up at 6 a.m. and I'm going to get on my computer and I'm going to write for three hours, even if it's crap. And I'm going to do this as a discipline every day. So Love that it. would be my, my quick Love it. And, and in terms of, uh, have you any book, like I, uh, I recommend all the time, uh, a friend of mine, a mentor of mine, um, Robert McKee, who I'm sure you're, yeah. you're familiar with the story. Um, I love his stuff. Um, also Blake Snyder, as you mentioned, say the cat's great, John Truby, Sid Field. Yeah. Is there any specific book that you'd say, this is a, a really good one to get that, you know, perhaps. It's what you mentioned. I think for me, you know, Robert and Key is amazing, but if you're starting out and you're just going, how do I write a screenplay? It's, it's Blake Snyder, Save the Cat. Exactly. I mean, yeah. That's all the know, different that's steps. That, yeah. 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 In fact, it's funny because I think when I lived in LA there, you know, every, every couple of years there would be, here's how Blake Snyder has ruined the movie industry because <laughs> everybody's read the book and everybody writes that way. And it's because it works. It's there's rules and you follow the rules and it works. And so I would say for anybody starting out, Blake Snyder, save the cat. That's what you want to do. Brilliant. Thanks so much. Yeah. I'm going to go really quickly to the quick fire round. Uh, okay. this is where I ask favorites and all that sort of stuff. So I'm not going to say the favorite, but a favorite movie. Okay. Um, Lars and the real girl. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Yeah, it's an what independent it? film with uh, Ryan Gosling. It's an independent film. Ryan Gosling, it sounds very strange. It's about a guy who falls in love with a um, life size sex doll. Um, but give it a chance because it's, uh, it's one of the most heartwarming films I've ever seen. Love it. Love it. Great. Um, favorite TV series? Uh, right now, Shit's Creek. Oh, yeah, that is amazing. I'm, you know, high five on that. That's yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so funny. Uh, next is favorite uh, favorite book. Wow, favorite book uh, is probably honestly. Uh, so my favorite author is probably C.S. Lewis. Um, I went and actually studied C.S. Lewis and Tolkien in Oxford, like where they were, which was like pretty amazing. So probably of his books, my favorite is The Great Divorce. Super brilliant. Uh, favorite artist. Um, Carvaggio. Carvaggio. Okay, that's yeah. uh, no. I mean, I know who Carvaggio is, but it's a. It's not often mentioned, so it's good to get to give Carvaggio some love. Yeah, his his paintings are unbelievable. They're very. They changed. Uh, I was in Italy and got to see like a whole bunch of his stuff right up front. His paintings and his uh, his uh, sculpting actually, and Carvaggio is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, favorite musician or band? Oh, wow. Uh, right now, Sleeping at Last. Um, oh, yeah. My friend Ryan, he, uh, he's written a bunch of stuff. He's writing a lot for TV and film right now. And so he gave me his uh, soundtracks, and I, that's what I write to. Yes, I that's amazing. That's, and that, that's exactly, I do that. And then there's a, a band, a Norwegian band as well, uh, or a, is it Norwegian or Swedish? They have a, 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 a track called Firsta. I'll, I'll send you the details and stuff, yes, but it's, it's, it's very similal, like Sleeping at Last, I, I literally, uh, I think I wrote two short films to one of their yeah. uh, soundtracks on Spotify. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, so all three writers have that secret, the, you know? Some of the um, Icelandic bands, like Sigaros, right. and um, I'll, I'll write to their stuff because it's more ethereal, so I don't have to pay attention to the words and, yes. yeah. Yes, uh, love it. Um, uh, favorite philosopher? uh Kierkegaard 
Great. Uh, if you could travel anywhere, past, present, or future, when would you go? Where or when? When. When would I go? Wow. Um, I'm a big fan of right now, <laughs> to okay. be honest. All yeah. right. I love, you know, where I, I'm kind of that, like, I'm, ve- I'm a very nostalgic person. Like, I, I, like, keep everything. I'm a little bit of a hoarder, maybe. I'm very, very nostalgic, very sentimental. But I also, like, um, I'm always, I love being present and kind of what is coming forward, so. Great. Um, if you had any superpower, what would you choose? Um, probably to be an amazing dancer. Okay. All right. Cool. Like, what kind of dance? Uh, like all of them. I want all of them. I want to be hip hop. I want to be modern. I want to be like, <laughs> I want to be able to just dance like amazing dance dancers, like the way that they're built and how they can move just blow my mind. They, they like cause an emotion in me when I watch dance. Wow. So that I think to have that, to be able to not only just dance, but then have the superpower of really causing people to think and feel differently because of it, I think would be my superpower. Love it. If you could live anywhere besides where you're living, where would you live? Uh, Laguna Beach, California. Okay. That was, there's no hesitation there. No, no. I lived there for a couple of years and it's like, I will spend the rest of my life trying to get back there. I mean, I love, I love, uh, I've been all over the world. So I love Switzerland. I love, I lived in Kenya for a while. Um, Love Italy, but Laguna Beach, California is my spot. I hear you. Um, if you could be, if you were doing anything other than what you're doing at the moment, what would you be doing? Uh, probably screenwriting and acting. Actually, Love not that. even acting. I don't want to do acting anymore. Screenwriting and directing. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Again, a lot of a lot of parallels. And lastly, if you could give one piece of advice to the world on a billboard that you want people to see that you could give to everybody, what would the piece of advice be, JJ? Um, you know, it's. It, our our main thing that we say at Story Brand is if you confuse, you lose. <laughs> so that would be kind of the main thing that I'm always telling people. But the the other thing that really changed my life from the Story Brand framework is never play the hero, always play the guide. I mean that, and when you understand from a story perspective that like even in movies, heroes are actually the weakest, not weakest, but very weak characters in film. They're up and down, they doubt themselves, they make huge mistakes. The guide stays steady. It's Gandalf. It's Yoda. It's, you know, all of the people who are like the steady voice who work for other people's success. And I think that when you shift that in your mind, that you are not the hero of the story in this world, your role is to be the guide. Don't play the victim. Don't play the villain. And often don't play the hero. Be the guide. Help people win the day. And when you do, not only will your life be more fulfilled, but ultimately your business is going to grow as well. Love it. Love it, JJ. So um, for people who want to know more, first of all, your book, Marketing Made Simple with yourself and Donald Miller uh, will be released uh, March 17th. March 17th. It's available for pre-order now. So whenever you hear this, you can go to Amazon and get it. Um, and March, and then 7, we also, March 17th, people, by the way, is, is also St. Patrick's Day. Just wanted to let you know. It so, is. Very yes, I know. We're having a book release party that night and there will be some libations involved, I'm sure. Good. Um, but once, if you go and pre-order the book, we actually, you can go to marketingmadesimplesummit.com and you can give, show your receipt. And basically at there, we have put together about five videos, a marketing summit, basically of five videos of how StoryBrand built our own business. And we kind of pull back the curtains on a few things. We talk about a few things in the book, but really it's a lot of extra material. So things that you can start working on right now that are very practical. So go get the book and then go to marketingmadesimplesummit.com and register and you'll get the, um, you'll get those videos right now. Super. Well, all of the, that, that will information will be as well as the other links to storybrand.com and businessmadesimple.com will be available on the show notes as well. Dr. JJ Peterson, thank you so much for taking this time to share with uh, us Um, So much valuable information about how to really market your business better. I'm really excited about your new book. I'm sure it's going to become a huge bestseller. Congratulations on all the great work and thank you so much again. Uh, Thanks so much. Loved it.